Hi, I'm Leslie Muko, Deputy General Counsel and Vice President of Legal Affairs. COVID-19 has presented many unique challenges for members. With restrictions around the country beginning to ease, I'm happy to have the opportunity to talk to you today about some best practices and issues you should keep focused on in the months ahead. First and foremost, members should be familiar with all applicable state and local orders. Many set standards, for example, for how many people can be present during an in-person showing. Some require that showings be by appointment only, and some continue to restrict the use of open houses. When in-person activity and showings do take place, members should maintain a detailed log of interactions. So be sure to collect information such as individuals' names, their contact information, phone number, and dates and times of those interactions so you can easily recall that information should an issue arise down the road. Another best practice is to continue to follow CDC guidance and recommendations for how to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Continue to require hand washing, provide hand sanitizer, require the use of face masks, and maintain social distancing in any in-person business you conduct. Implementing those best practices and guidelines from the CDC will help mitigate the risk of COVID-19 for yourself and for those you interact with in a business setting. Fair housing is a central component of every member's obligations, both legally and pursuant to the Realtor Code of Ethics. The pandemic has many members asking the question of, well, is COVID-19 considered a disability under federal law? Because of the severity of the symptoms and highly contagious nature of the virus, we believe it's possible that a court will conclude that COVID-19 is a disability. What does that mean? While anti-discrimination laws generally prohibit certain questions about a person's disability, but because COVID-19 is so highly contagious and potentially very dangerous, we believe it's permissible for real estate professionals to ask for self-disclosure of symptoms or known exposure to the virus prior to engaging in in-person activities. This is to ensure the protection of not only the real estate professional, but others with whom they're interacting in a business setting. We know there are a lot of questions on members' minds. Are there any restrictions on conducting in-person activity? What about open houses? And is remote online notarization an option in my jurisdiction? To help answer these questions, we've developed Coronavirus, a guide for realtors. In this guidance, you'll find answers to your questions about fair housing, showings during the reopening phase, transaction guidance for listed properties, properties in escrow and lease properties, this guidance will be continuously updated as the pandemic evolves to help support you and see you through these difficult times. This pandemic has highlighted the valuable role real estate agents and brokers play during the home sale process. And this is an opportunity for our members to lead by example. For more information about what we discussed here today and any other questions you have related to COVID-19, please visit nar.realtor forward slash coronavirus. Thank you and be well.